consumer spending, businesses, inventories, you name it, everybody in this room knows. Here's the problem. The amount of hours that we work are declining. The amount of wages that we're making are declining. Some of you might have seen the Wall Street Journal article just yesterday where more and more companies are saying, let me cut back people's salaries in order to prevent me from laying off more people. So that means more reductions in pay. And at the same time, you have productivity improving, which means you need less people to do the job. Huge, huge problem. What do you do then to recreate the six million jobs that are lost? Well, some fraction of those jobs will come back when people start to feel that the economy is turning, and that's a good sign. We're starting to see companies like Walmart say they're going to hire 20,000 plus people. We've seen some tech companies start to turn the corner and say they're going to start to do the same. We're starting to see those very early hints that perhaps things are beginning to stabilize. But it doesn't fundamentally answer the question of, will all those jobs come back if, in fact, we were living in a bubble? How many of those jobs were construction jobs? How many of those jobs were manufacturing jobs? How many of those jobs have been changed because the tech community has made more and more innovative products that have created less and less opportunities for you and me or any one of our friends to get back into that job. That is the fundamental issue that Hilda Solis, the Labor Secretary, and that the President of the United States are addressing. Now look, they believe that they can do some of that through the American Recovery and Investment Act, and if they can, that's a miracle, and I applaud them if they can do some of that. I just am not sure that I have the full faith that three to four million, as they've talked about, between now and 2011, you know, the saving or creating is a little bit of mumbo jumbo, um, that they can, they can do that. And so they talk about doing it through things like green technology and alternative energy and healthcare and things of that nature. You know, the problem is we're just, we're, we're in an environment right now where more and more companies are tightening their belt. There, I mean, it's, I'll give you a classic example. This morning I was speaking to the CEO of Tenet Healthcare. The CEO of Tenet Healthcare comes on to tell me about healthcare reform. And so I said, well, well how are you doing if you're a hospital operator and you know that 47 million people in this country are uninsured, the number's only growing, and the unemployment rate is only getting worse. And he said to me, Alexis, I lose a million dollars a day on people who don't pay their bills when they come into an emergency room. On average, on a given year, I lose $170 million. Now, it's in his best interest, clearly, to see something happen with the uninsured, to do something to get out there to make sure that the unemployment rate doesn't continue to rise. But when he measured his performance and where he stands in this recession, he measured his performance purely based on how much he has cut his, all of his expenses. It wasn't about his future growth, future opportunities, future expansion. It was all about cutting the fat. And that's what we're seeing with so many different companies across the country as they're tightening the reins but they haven't quite figured out where they're going to recreate that growth or that opportunity. And in any recession, the fact of the matter is it's going to take time. So it presents a really, really challenging predicament. Here's the good news. Recently, I spoke to the head of manpower, you know, very big hiring. They know what's going on in hiring. They did a survey, as a matter of fact, across the globe. And they looked on a three-month basis, looking out to the fall, what kind of trends they were seeing in hiring. Ironically, in it, the survey of the, of the executives who participated in it wasn't overtly optimistic, but one of the things they talked about in certain fields was a talent shortage. What you think, a talent shortage in today's environment, that's so 
counterintuitive to what it is that we're hearing. But I believe that's part of why you keep hearing about all these programs to figure out how you can retrain people to do different things, why more and more people are choosing DeVry or other places to go back to get educations online, because there are specific fields that need highly trained workers. And so one of the things this administration and a lot of corporations are trying to do is figure out what will those new highly trained workers be and where will they wind up? So ironically, in some fields, they do have a talent shortage and so that will present opportunities. The question is, will it present enough opportunities for the amount of losses that we've seen? But we're beginning to see some of those early healthy signs that perhaps some of these guys are turning the corner and starting to feel a little bit more optimistic about where things are headed. One of the things I was saying uh, last night uh, when I was with, with um, Sean Hannity's, we were talking a little bit about the President's announcement yesterday about the fact that um, 10 of the 19 largest financial institutions have now decided that they're going to pay back the $68 billion that they borrowed. And while uh, it seems like a drop in a bucket, right, $68 billion when we're now talking about trillions, it's so hard to digest all of these things that we're talking about. The good news is, at least we're getting some of our money back. And in the process, we're actually making some money on those investments. We've made $4.5 billion in interest and preferred payments through these investments in financial institutions. There's no guarantee that that $700 billion that we've invested, particularly with the automakers, that we will see any of that come back. But for the ones that do pay it back, the good news is that we're getting some healthy interest payments on those investments. And at least thus far, some of the largest institutions in the country are paying the money back. And I think, frankly, that's a very, very healthy sign for the recovery in the financial community. Had this administration, whether we agree with government intervention or not, I don't support all these executive compensation, I mean, some of it's just absolutely outrageous. On the other hand, there is no doubt that had they not stepped in, had they not followed through with the stress tests, we still would have had such a vast amount of uncertainty in the financial markets this is the underpinning of the economy. They clearly figured out how to create some comfort in the marketplace. It's no guarantee that just because these guys have paid back the funds that we aren't still due for some real rough waters ahead. On the other hand, the fact of the matter is clearly these institutions have stabilized enough where they believe they have a strong enough capital base to survive what still could be a, a long and prolonged recovery out of this recession. So I view that piece of the equation as really essential because at the end of the day, it matters for everybody in this room. It matters to me and our ability to get access to credit through lending, which is the lifeblood of this economy. So there's no doubt that is such a crucial piece of the equation. Take a step away for just a moment from the, the jobs and, and the credit story and what all of this means to each and every one of us for just a second. There's no doubt that probably every single person in this room knows somebody who did lose a job, who does have a small business, who is suffering, or a family member who needs more help than ever. The good thing, I think, is that we're starting to learn some really, really valuable lessons, or so I hope, no guarantees. But the best thing you can do coming out of something like this is, is take away some things that we want to teach our kids or our friends or our family members. And one of those things that I measure that I look a lot at in the economy is our savings rate. Just a year ago, I don't know if you guys realize this, 